This is a quick demo. We're going to talk about Meeting Bloom's features of abstracts, registration submission, and how they interact with each other. So first we're going to show you the dashboard. And real quickly, this menu structure, if you see everything to the left is customer interaction related. Everything to the right is setup related. So you got your initial setups, your cloning of the sites for the next year's conference, uh, your task manager. So these are all things that are not customer directly interaction. These are customer uh, interactions. We'll see here your dashboard. And your dashboard, you have access to all your past meetings that are related to this meeting. So you'll get a conference relationship key and every year it'll clone over. That way you'll be able to see year over year data. So for example, if I click these, I can see the year over year data related to you know, these four years that are the same conference just year over year. It's just a good way to see how your conference is performing from the previous years. Now, if you're using Meeting Bloom for uh, registration and abstracts, your dashboard will have a registration overview and an abstract overview. If your system is registering and submitting an abstract at the same time, then this does not apply to your setup. And then your reporting, you can see here, uh, registration count. So you can see the counts of how many registrations on each conference here, when they happened. These are weeks out from the conference date. That way, all the conferences, regardless of when it started, maybe one started end of May and maybe one started at the beginning of June, all of them will line up to a accurate reporting structure. And you can also see abstract count. So registration count, abstract count. Again, this is just so you can see year over year data to see how your site is performing to see if maybe you had a bad year or this year's a lot better. It gives you a good idea. You also have monthly money charts, cumulative. So it's just different ways to report on your data. Logs, logs are a good way to log anything you want with a site. Anybody on your team can see the logs. So for example, if you contact your people who submitted abstracts and you said, hey, you have been accepted. You can say, I emailed these people on this date and let them know that they're accepted. That way, when somebody else comes into the system and say you're sick and they don't know what's going on, they come into the logs and they can see, oh, well, John contacted the abstract submitters and said that they can start registering now. So it's just a nice way to uh, keep track of everything. Now, customers, customer tab is if your customer calls up and says, did I register and pay for the banquet ticket? And you can go in, you can search for their name, customer ID, or email, and you can go and say, oh, this person is it right here. I can go in here and I can see, yes, you submitted your abstract. Everything's good. Uh, let's see your payment information. I can see nice quick glance, what kind of payment information happened, paid by check, uh, what they bought, uh, if they bought a workshop or another workshop or did a donation. So a nice quick glance to see what's going on. And if they canceled or if I need to perform a refund, I can do that right here too. If I can refund individual items, I can cancel something that was free. I can refund and cancel everything to just start all over for those customers. Say they don't want to go. And since this is a check, uh, it would just cancel the entire thing. There's no partial refunds. But if this was, for example, a paid by card, let's go paid by card, you can refund cancel all or you can refund original charge this way you can do a partial refund if you needed to uh, change types change registration types so anything that the customer submitted goes in here and you can change it for them just a nice way to access everything they submitted also if you want to send them a receipt you can send them a receipt you can send them a uh, itemized charges receipt so this will send a receipt with any charges or refunds It'll just send the charges and refunds to them to let them know what's going on with their payments. Send certificate. At the end of the conference, this will ungrade like it is right now, and you can send a certificate of attendance. So before the conference is over, this is grayed out. That way you don't accidentally send them a certificate. So email customers. When you click here, this is where you will uh, contact your people. Like for example, all abstracts. Let's say I need to contact rejected. I'll click rejected. And my template down here is, I'm going to choose rejected abstracts. That way I can send everybody that was rejected a rejection letter saying, sorry, you're not accepted. Just quick and easy. If you notice here that all the other ones are grayed out, this is so you don't accidentally send the incorrect email. 
because you are choosing here rejected abstracts. It's only going to give you the template for rejected. It's just a really nice safety net to make sure you don't accidentally send an incorrect email to your customers. For example, all abstracts, my all abstracts template is now available and I can't send the rejected abstracts. And you see my registrations are grayed out. If I go to registrations, these are grayed out now and I can access these templates. Again, just a nice way to not accidentally send, you know, an incorrect email. Reports, so conference reports. If you notice here, filtering tool is the same on the email and the customer reports. And that's because both tools really use the same filters. So why learn two different filter structures when you can just learn one and it's the same for both. It also saves me a ton of coding because I can just build one filter for, for both. So you see more filters. If you needed more filtering capability, it gives you every type of filtering you need. You can choose your custom questions filters, which ones to show down here. And once you set this all up, it's set for life. So you don't have to reset the stuff up every year over year. If you needed to remove something, you can, but you don't have to go in here and configure this stuff every single year. You just click the clone button and it will clone your entire conference, including all the settings that you have, and it will preserve them into the new conference year. Uh, other reports, accounting reports. I love this because we designed the accounting reports to actually make sense for accounting departments. This has perfect reconciliation reports of money coming in, different types of money coming in, your refunds, money going out, any new charges, and it does it in a monthly grouping. So you won't lose submissions, you won't lose accounting reports. It's a perfect reconciliation report. Other uh, reports are like additional questions, surveys, polls. These are all just uh, quick Excel reports that you can get the data out. Oh, and I forgot to mention this. On the conference reports, here you can say, I want a pie chart, and this pie chart I can choose based off of custom questions or any other questions I want to get a pie chart on. Also, export file Excel. So say at the end of your year, you want to get all your data. You know, you don't want to call up and say, hey, how do I get my data? You can literally choose all fields, choose all your registrants and create output. There's going to be a preview. We're going to create a preview output and it will get all your data. You can preview it here and then say, give me it in Excel. And it'll give you all the data that the customer submitted to this conference. Program and poster list. Now I'm very proud of this because our program is uh, simple, but it meets the demands of everything. So for example, you see here preview, and here's a preview of what this data is. So uh, conference registration, here it is right here. The welcome, if you see this, it kind of does a opening box here. It's great out here. So if you go in here, if main content contains something and your secondary content contains something, then it'll uh, do the accordion out. So if you see here, the accordion is what happens. You can not do that by just adding two uh, items in here, one here and a separate one here. Um, it's not as complex as it sounds, but it gives you a lot of options. Now, your next conference year, your program isn't going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be similar. So you can export this entire program out and re-import it into your new conference year, and then just remove the items that you don't want in your program. Another neat feature about our system is abstracts. So you can add speakers or attendees and you can actually add the abstracts to here. There's a secured website portal that your conference attendees will log into and be able to access the abstracts that the customers submitted. So it's just another nice way to give your attendees, you know, more data right before they come to the conference. They can see everything, they can prep the agenda. Also, they can save it and create little notes and the notes are saved. So everything, let me show you that. I, I think this is really neat. So I'm going to copy one of these test records. And here is an example of the website. So you can see you have a website. You can add register, conference blog, all this stuff. Let's go to a program quick. View or build personal itinerary. So the, there's the program that you already seen. And there's no access to the abstracts right now. I can view my personal itinerary. Log in. And now I can see my personal itinerary. I can add notes to any item that I added. And let me close this so you can see it here. So I basically just click here and I add items to my personal itinerary. You see, I just added coffee break. When I see my itinerary, 
I have coffee break. I can make little notes. Um, I want to talk to John and save it. I can print this out as an attendee or I can go to the conference with a tablet or laptop and see this data right there. Again, abstracts are accessible here and it supports all the Greek characters. Now, something that Meeting Bloom does that nobody else does, and I am very proud of this. If you look here, these characters are stored, and I'm going to show you the back end of it a little bit. You can see here, they are stored actually as UTF-8 characters. And other companies, every single company out there, I've, I've tested them all, they say they support UTF-8 characters, but they don't save them in the database as a UTF-8. They save them as a HTML character. And the problem with that is if you export this into Excel or a Word document or PDF, you will get those little squares instead of your alpha beta characters. And you know as well as I know it's a pain to deal with those little squares when you want an actual beta character. So our system saves it actually as a UTF-8 character in the database, which means that this character will not be lost in translation. So let's go back to the admin. We're going to go to a poster list. Poster lists are really easy to build. So say you have a thousand abstracts, you can go in here and filter down and say, I want to add all these abstracts to the first day. Um, I only want to add half of them to the first day. You click confirm and add, it will add 500 abstracts to the first day. Then you come back in here and add the rest of them to your second day. And now your abstracts are listed in a poster list structure that's easy to read. It's all alphabetized already. You can create indexes off of it. And it is also accessible on the Conference Essentials page. So abstract poster list, it's accessible here. And another neat thing, I'm sorry I keep saying that. <laughs> uh, see, I have this attendee is logged in and it says remove from itinerary. Well, they clicked in here. They said, I want to see that poster. So when they added it for their itinerary, they have their standard itinerary. And if you look down here, they have the poster itinerary. So any poster they add here, it will add to their personal itinerary. And they can add notes, say, I want to talk about this subject. Um, it just makes it so that the attendees have great interactions at your conference and get more uh, ideas passed back and forth. So you, you have 1,000 people at your conference or 2,000 people. You now have notes for all 2,000 people for them to come in here and say, oh, I did want to ask this question or I wanted to ask this one for this. So it creates a lot more interactions instead of somebody saying, oh, I'll remember that later on. And then of course we forget about it. This way it's in a note in their personal itinerary. When they show up to the conference, they go, I wanted to ask this question about this abstract. Great job for creating interactions. Now let me get back. Uh, abstracts. So this is just filtering. Uh, if you see here, you have all kinds of filtering off of uh, you know, registration types, questions, and formatting. So the neat thing about formatting is you can format these author affiliates any way you need to, you know, title case formatting, all caps, uh, italicize the authors, um, affiliates bolded. Uh, so there's many, many different formatting ways to do this. And then you can output this into a Word document and it will give you, and, and I'll show you that output. And here we go. So these are just tests, but it gives you a good idea you know, of what the output is going to be uh, doing on here. So this person is requesting a short talk, so they pop a little red text on there, and then their abstracts are right here. So that's pretty much it on this side. Let's go to Task Manager. Task Manager is, again, it's just a tool that you can keep better track of what your texts are on this conference. So you can add um, like ideas like, oh, I need to do this, this, and this, and this. And then when you get doing it, you just drag it over into your planning stage or in your work stage. This way you can keep track of all this data. Just a nice, easy way to, you know, not have to, again, make notes, you know, throughout many, many systems. It's all in one system and setup. So setup is something that we will pretty much do for you. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. It's, uh, you know, self-explanatory, really. Uh, general information, you know, goals, uh, email for the contact us button. So these are you know pretty self-explanatory items, but we're gonna do the initial setup. That way it's really easy for you to understand what's going on. And then the year over year, I'm gonna show you this, you're gonna love this, is clone. So uh, 
phone conference. I literally would click that button and it will clone all the customized fields, dynamic questions. So everything related to this conference, it's going to clone over into the new year. That way you don't have to reconfigure this whole thing every year. You just click that button and 10 minutes of changing, you know, dates for the next year. So I think that's pretty much the summary of, you know, I don't want to make this a long video, but that's a summary of what we do here. So uh, if you like what we're doing over at Meeting Bloom, go to meetingbloom.com and ask for a demo. We'll set you up and the system is quick and simple. Thanks. Thanks.